Hello and welcome to Lightfoot Green. Um, we're here on the, with the Bailey Financial Services live stream of the Hoppers versus Table Topping Coldy here at Lightfoot Green. It is a beautiful day. It's a perfect day. If you want to come to Lightfoot Green, please get yourself down here, have yourself a pint and come and support the lads. But if you can't, then thank you very much for watching us. We had our best ever figures in the last live stream with nearly 5,000 people tuning in to watch. So that was absolutely brilliant. So thank you everyone who's came and watched us. Uh, with me today in the commentary box, I have two distinguished gentlemen. Uh, so very, very pleasure to have Director of Rugby, uh, Gareth Dyer with us. How are you doing, Gareth? Yeah, I'm great, John. Thanks for having me. So uh, a big game for Hoppers. But before we get into that, our other commentator is John he Hetherington. I'm going to get that right. How are you doing, John? I'm doing fine. Thank you, John. So what are you both expecting from today's game and the lads in general? Um, well, I think from our point of view, it's a case of continuing to try and, and build for next season. I think we're looking at obviously a number of young players who we're trying to get some experience into. I think you know we've got a pretty good forward pack out today, so I'd expect them to be competitive, and then ultimately uh, just about getting some positives from you know some of the young boys who are involved. Yeah, I think um, particularly that these young players. It's nice to see. Uh, we've never seen young Walker today. To understand, he's only 17. I look forward to that. And at the other extreme, perhaps uh, see if Nick Royal's still got the pace he used to have. <laughs> yeah, well, I think I think he won't be disappointed with that, John. Let's put it that way. Yeah. So, going on today. So, those who don't know that it, Coldy, if they win today, could be crowned champions. So, there's something definitely to play for us. And regarding, I mean, we we've got you here, Gareth, and we're going to do a, a Q and A session with you at half time. But we can't help but ask about your. What, what's happened this season really? Why do you think we've had a, after two relatively good seasons, what's happened this? Yeah, I think um, it's been a perfect, or should we say an imperfect storm for us in, in a lot of ways. Um, you know, the injuries that we suffered, particularly in the autumn, you know, didn't really give us the opportunity to get going this season. And I think probably that's that's been the biggest, you know, disappointment is we've built no momentum uh, throughout the year. We've been firefighting in terms of selection. It's been impossible almost to get the same 20 out week in, week out. And probably off the field, there's been one or two things that we probably haven't been as good at. Um, so we've made a couple of changes there. And, and obviously, as I've written in the programme today, uh, you know, I'm delighted that we've we've appointed Byron McGuigan, who's currently obviously uh, Sale Sharks and Scotland player, who's going to come involved uh, with the coaching staff next year. So, yeah, there's been a few things. I think it's all added up to where we find ourselves. It's, it's not been great, but ultimately, um, you know, we've got to draw a line under that and move on. Yeah, because this season is getting near its end point for Hoppers. Um, and so we've now got to, like you say, start working for the future, haven't we? Right. For all those things, we are going to have the ref mic coming in, so we will start operating that now. You sometimes do get wind noise and you do obviously get heavy breathing and the odd swear word might come into it, but we are live and there's not much we can do about that. But I'll apologise beforehand. But we are about to kick off, so um, enjoy the game. Thank you very much for watching. And give us a shout out where you're from as well. That'll be really good for our social media presence. I think it's imperative, John, don't you think, for, for these, these young boys, we get a, a reasonably good start, you know, try and get into the game, uh, build our way into it. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to be sticking up, chasing a deficit that you're too early on. No. Try and get a bit of momentum. Be familiar with a fair number of Caldy players, no doubt. Yeah, I think one thing you've got to say about Caldy is that they've stuck with the team that obviously, you know, I think were probably unfortunate to get relegated from National One last year. Um, I think, again, you know, the fact that they're, they're going to get promoted, it's just a matter of when. Uh, you know, Hull Ionians obviously did it last year, came down and went straight back up, so whether that's telling us something about the difference between the two leagues and, and, and the intensity and you know, the fact that teams coming down to National 2 are still finding it relatively straightforward. Um, perhaps it's easy to the backside for the rest of National 2. Yeah, I mean, on the other sort of part of that, we've got this... Oh dear. Uh, we've got this RFU decision about chopping funding from uh, from National One, so that's gonna mm. that's gonna happen next season. There's gonna be loads of players kicking about. And, yeah. 
you know. I think they're probably just starting to see what the uh, reorganisation is going to look like as well. So it's quite a lot of um, you know, change is going to come in from well, the end of next season, which is going to restructure the league. So um, is there a move to, to smaller divisions? Is that part of it? Yeah, I think that the the plan that's on the table at the moment is that. National 1 will go down to 14 teams and then National 2, instead of being two divisions, will split into three. So, um, yeah, there's, there's three divisions of 14, so there is going to be some quite big changes coming in. So a good start for Calder here, getting themselves, after a hopper's knock-on, getting themselves in a good attacking line-out. Yeah, they stopped that driving more quite well, the helpers, but Coldy did well to keep possession. But yeah, no not the penalty. So a simple offside there by Hoppers number 18 has given Caldi this uh, penalty. Hoppers, Hoppers scrum after they played for Caldi for a fair amount of last season, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Uh, Jake Squirrel went on loan to uh, to Coldy. They had a, you know, big injury problems at nine all last year, um, so we had a, a chat. You know, we've got a good relationship with two clubs, and uh, you know, Jake got some good experience down there for two or three months last year. Looks promising for Coldy. So I think. Oh, that's good defence by Hobbs. Just keeping our just on the line. Yeah. And a knock on. The Hoppers will be happy about that, making sure we don't concede early points like we have done in other games this season. That was superb from Chris Taylor. He really read that really well. Um, you know, perhaps pushing the boundaries a little bit, but you know, in, in situations like that, you've got to. But um, you know, I think one thing that you know we will say about you know our team for this year. You know, we've, we've obviously got parts of our game which are you know, work ons and, and weaknesses, but you know, the, the actual effort and determination has, has always been there. You know, we can never ask any more of that. Um, and you just saw it there in that defensive skin. Crouch! Bind! Set! Have we seen this referee before this season, do you think? No, I'm not familiar with Dan Rollins, I must admit. I don't think he's... Um, he doesn't remind me of any particular games that we've seen him. Um, I must admit, I have had a, a chat with the uh, head of referees a couple of times this season about certain things, um, particularly about the familiarity we were getting with certain refs who seem to be doing quite a lot of our games and ever since then that seems to have changed a little bit. So, um, yeah, um, let's see how he goes today. And Lamprey trying to make a couple of metres there, make the kick away a little bit easier. Use it. Yeah, set that up nicely. We've just got a good kick here from Jake. Okay. I think we are playing into a little bit of a wind. I know it generally goes across the pitch at Lightfoot Green. You don't normally get one that goes. Yeah. Straight down the pitch. It's definitely going from right to left foot. As if you can see there from the touch judges flag there, there is a bit of a breeze that's coming. But a gorgeous day for rugby. So like I say, if you can get down to Lightfoot Green, you are in the Preston area, come down, have a watch, have a pint. It's a perfect afternoon to watch a bit of rugby, followed by hopefully England beating Wales. So. Yeah. I, had to get, I had to get that in, guys. I do apologise. I, I, I know you said we're not allowed to swear, John, so I'll, I'll, I'll just say nothing. <laughs> Good tackle by Captain Sam Stott. Tackle! 
Yeah. Back on. Yeah, that was a nice inside yeah. pass it looked like actually. Yeah, good angles were on there. This is where Collie really dangerous. And he's got it, he's got it. Yeah. I mean, they showed some of the skill levels there of Coldy and why they are doing so well this season. There was no panic there at all, nice attacking lines, it was, um, it was a good well worked try. Yeah, it was good, good you know, interlinking to start off with, they got the position, you know, they are very dangerous behind Coldy. Um, you know, even though Nick Royal gets a lot of the plaudits, it's the guys inside who are you know, creating the opportunities a lot of the time for him. You know, as you saw there, you know, very well drilled, they knew exactly where they were going with that. And um, in the end, you know, we ran out of defenders. So, uh, you know, that's how Coldy have played all season. And, um, you know, for the neutral, it's uh, a really nice, easy style to watch. No, he's missed the conversion there. So, the score is Poppers nil, Coldy five. So we need to get our hands on the ball. We've, we've not seen much of it so far. Um, you know, if you're going to give Coldy the majority of possession, then you know, you're going to be in for a long afternoon. So uh, let's see if we can get our hands on, back on the ball from this restart. It's a big deep keep, kick from Joe Pryor there. But finally, a bit of possession. So. I think one of the more frustrating parts of this season has been maybe Hoppers not utilising their territory and possession to the best of their advantage. Mm -hmm. And actually, maybe that's a little bit of lack of confidence or something like that, but we certainly had too many chances that we've let go this season. Yeah, I think that comes from lack of consistency in selection as well. You know, when you're consistent, and there we go, you know, another unforced error, you know, unfortunately, which is again something we've been guilty of too much in games. On advantages over there, as the ref is saying on our live uh, mic from the ref as well. So, okay, somebody needs to deal with that. <laughs> so, just put his foot into a bit of a lucky escape for Hoppers because, uh, again, you, you can't let the, the ball bounce, so you're going to open yourself up to a world of hurt. I think the ball held up a little bit in the breeze, really, but you know, quite frankly, the guys coming forward have really got to take more responsibility there. You're fine. Chris Taylor trying to make it a few yards there after the shortened line out. So this is part of our, our new midfield makeup for the game. We had Sam Stone, Jordan Dorrington, so uh, they may not be the biggest of guys, although they do throw themselves around. They've certainly got a lot of pace and a lot of skill. Yeah, that was a fantastic piece of play. Um, obviously, with the wind being the way it is, they, they want to keep the ball in hand. Um, obviously, got to make sure that we're accurate now. You see, and, and again, that, that, that's part of the issues that we've had all season is the fact that we've, we've done some really nice stuff there to get out of our 22. And are they a miracle ball too early or? You know, the pass isn't on, you know, and, and, and quite frankly, you know, forcing it, you know, it too often results in that. I think we've got to be 
a little bit careful of only thinking the wind. You know, I'll probably be testing out you know how far we can get with the wind. Yeah. Is that something that you reckon we've struggled with? You mentioned the programme there about game management that this down in the second half. Is that something we've missed this season? Um, yeah, I think you know we've chopped and changed our half backs all season because of injury and, and things like that. But, um, you know, if you want to play in those positions, you know, there is a certain responsibility in, that goes with it. And um, you know, I think our game management has been, has been poor at times. Uh, you know, probably overplaying in the wrong areas is a, a key weakness of ours. So, Coldy there, getting ready for some more good territory possibly here with a, a penalty at scrum. And with the win, that's a pretty decent nudge down. I mean, he might have been hoping for slightly better than that, actually. But he puts them on R22 again. Imagine they'll be looking to use uh, Tom Sanders in the second row, the Caldy captain. He's probably one of the biggest guys in the division. Uh, very good line out forward. A bit of a let off there, so a knock on by. So we have Hoppers have a knock on advantage here. Um, referee stopped it, nothing nothing going for Hoppers there, so bring it back for a scrum. Yeah, we've talked about injuries this year, I think over the last two years one of the key strengths of our team has obviously been our scrummaging. Um, you know, to lose Pete Olsen in the last pre-season game and rule him, rule him out for the full year has been a, you know, a huge blow for us because um, Pete is one of the best tight ends around, you know, certainly in national team. Um, and you're always going to miss somebody who's got that power and size to uh, anchor your scrimmage. And experience as well, because he's been around for a while. Yeah, yeah, he has Pete. You know, he's, uh, he's got a you know, couple of hundred games under his belt. And he's a very, very dynamic player as well. Good to see Lamps back at home as well after his layoff with his leg injury. He did say to me though after the game last week that he was pretty knackered at half time, so as he gets his match fitness back. Yeah, I'm sure Lamps has been doing lots in the gym to get himself back in the right shape. I'm not saying anything, I'm sure he has. <laughs> Now, hoppers have got to keep their discipline here, not uh, not giving them an easy advantage. Yeah, we need to get off the line. Yeah, high tackle there by Ali Murray. Yeah. Knock on there, no tap. Well, Degsy was so, lurking there at the no centre. So he's get, despite the quick tap, the Hoppers player not being uh, ten, meet, 10 back, so he, uh, so penalty and Coldy are going to take the three. Well, that stemmed again. You know, we're, we're, we're trying to keep the ball, we're trying to obviously work our way upfield, but you know, breakdown in, in connection between the, the carrying player and his support, you know, and it allowed the Coldy seven. Um, I, I apologise for the pronunciation, I think it's spelled uh, Agboki. Um, you know, he's been around the block. Adam, I'll call him Adam, it's easier. Easier, yeah. Um, you know, Adam's certainly been you know, a good player at this level, and you know, good sevens will, will hurt you if you, you know, do get separated or isolated in the carry. <laughs> Successful penalty there by Coldy. Going back to the Pete Olsen injury, what's what's the situation with the Lancashire Cup? Because that was a Lancashire Cup game, wasn't it? It was played pre-season. Is the yeah, competition uh, actually happening? Any yeah, yeah. The semi-final, we believe, is going to be on Easter Saturday. We've drawn witness away in the semi-final, so um, providing that there's no rearranged fixtures for. Uh, for either team, I think that's the, the available date, and then the final, I believe, is in um, early May. Um, well, they've changed the bank holiday, haven't they? Yes. Oh, and he's fucking through it, straight through. <laughs> annoyed at that 
straight from a kickoff to not really lay a finger on a Colby player is very frustrating. Yeah, it's, just, it's just poor one-on-one -on -one defence. Um, you know, it was a pretty reasonable kick. You know, we've, you know, we've highlighted certain things in our game that we, we, we recognise have been poor all season. Um, I'd say probably kick chase, particularly the restarts, has been pretty average. Um, and that was particularly average. There you go, John. Nick Royal in for this first one. Mm. <laughs> I was saying before the game, I used to like the days when he, he played against Russell Flynn. And it was like uh, Russell's turning circle against Nick getting smacked by Russell before he got moving. <laughs> yeah, definitely a clash of approaches there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and he hits the post unlucky with the conversion. But that's Coldy up to a 13 0 lead already. So, what do you do now, guys? If you're in the situation, what, do you, what are you looking for from the players to get back onto this? Yeah, well, I think the first thing you know, you, you, you want to make sure you compete for you know the next the next opportunity for possession, and you want to be able to keep the ball for a period of play. And you now it's a great kick. Let's get there. Let's compete. You know, we've got there. That's unlucky. And the fact that you know, Jacob you've got his hands to that. But realistically, you need, you need possession. You need to be able to hold the ball for a period now. You know, build some pressure of your own. You know, ideally, look to try and get the next score and, and work your way back into the game. Almost quarter of the game gone, and we've not been in there 22 yet. No, no. So I don't think the wind's probably as strong as we, we're making it feel in terms of the way we're going to play. And, um, you know, the players on the field have got to sort of react to that. They've got to start you know, taking some ownership and say, you know, we can probably change our tactics a little bit and, and see what happens. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, the wind has dropped since the start, but and it is ideal rugby weather. So you're in, I mean, we're going to talk more at half-time, so you're in discussions with the players now about next year and who stays, who goes, and what happens next. So how do you look upon these games? You said you're blooding in a lot of young players, so it is going to, these games are going to be a struggle, particularly against teams like Coldy. So how much are you hoping to get from this? Are you looking for commitment, for effort? Um, I think, to be honest, John, they should be given. You know, if you want to play first team, you know, you know, commitment, effort, all the, the what we call the, the things that you know, should be free non-negotiables, whether they need to be there. Yeah. Yeah. Great hands there uh, by Chris Taylor. Yeah. And it's almost like a little microcosm of our season <laughs> there again, isn't it? Flashes of brilliance. I mean, the frustrating thing I think most of us have, have had is that we will play excellently for patches in games and then just not carry it through. Yeah, and that's you know the the national tier. If you if you don't do that, I think it's if you look at the, the closeness of the table pretty much throughout. You know, I think it's going to be a, a record points haul for whoever finishes third bottom and, and, and you know goes down. You know, it, it could be that you get more than 60 points and still get relegated, which is pretty incredible, really. Mm. You know, and, Every other year, bar one or two, that would have been more than enough to secure the state. So, um, yeah, but to get back to your point, John, I, I think what we're looking for is, is you know, players to show that they've got the ability and can improve and, 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 and get to where we need to get to. And this is all too easy for Cody. I mean, the guy's got some wheels, but that, again, he's how far did he travel then without really getting touched? Yeah, I don't know. I think. Ryan, who was on the blind side there, yeah. you know, got caught sort of sleeping a little bit. Um, you know, as you see, we called it there. You know, they're not a team that really just goes for the physical though. They're a really good team in terms of you know, pace, moving the ball, playing into space. Um, probably be, be a bit disappointed that they didn't get more from that. What about these, talking about the next season, what about these two young men that we've got on the bench? 
clap him. I mean, how do we get hold of him? What's his yeah, background? Will, yeah, Will's, Will's come to study at UCLan. Um, he's from uh, the Cardiff area. He was part of the Cardiff Blues um, sort of junior setup. So he's, he's played a reasonable standard in his youth. Um, and we, uh, it's a good tackle from Connor. Uh, and him playing a little bit of second team rugby earlier this year. He's, he's, he's looked, you know, as if he's got a lot of potential. Um, so we just want to see whether he can bring that up to first team level. He's, you know, he's got very, very uh, decent wheels. He's very, very quick. So um, you know, fullback or wing. He's, Again, somebody we'll, we'll look at probably more in the, in the next few games. And Tom Walker, obviously, son of Mickey, um, fly half, you know, a, a promising young player, somebody we've, um, we've been aware of for a couple of years coming through the system. Um, so, again, opportunity to see what Tom can do and uh, you know, if he can make the step up to senior rugby. He's only 17 years old, as well. Difficult to say what about that again, it all just seemed a bit too easy there for Coldy. Well again it's it's defence and missed tackles, isn't it? Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, you know, it's a high ball. We've not competed, we've not got off the ground, we've not chased, I don't think, with the reg with enough urgency. And then, you know, people are flat footed in defence and it's just waltz through. Um, yeah, to me, that, I think that, that kick, you know, needed to either go long, um, you know, or again, if we're going to uh, not be fearing the wind, you know, we should have been kicking out earlier when we were in our 22. From the touchline, from the Colgan, number 10 as well. Well, not bad! centre. Yeah, Gavin Roberts, good kicker. Um, to be fair, he's had a chance to get his eye in, so... Uh... <laughs> yeah, so that's again a great kick. Let's see what we get here. So... Yeah, it's just unlucky we didn't get the, the joy of the bounce there. I just think we needed more players being in and around yeah, that yeah, ball. You've got to look for the second ball, you know. We, we were in the right position there to win that. You know, the bounce did go cold his way, but there wasn't enough of our boys anticipating that second ball. How do you rate people like John Blanchard in his, his season with Hoppers? Yeah, I think it, John's had a fair season. You know, he's, he's, he came in when we had you know, real problems in terms of our front row. You know, um, the fact he can play both sides has been you know, a real boon for us. Um, I think he can look back at the season and think he's done a pretty, pretty good job. So the players need to get there now. And, uh, unfortunately, if you look to the right there, you've got one, two, three back rowers all looking for the carry, and yeah. not one of them has gone towards you know the supporting run to, to to affect the clear out. You know that that's just not reading the situation in the way that it should be. Um, I should say Sam Warbank. We should say is on his 50th appearance for Hoppers today. So congratulations, Sammy. Kind of started that break with his offload. Yeah, and he didn't really find really touch. Mm. Let's have a go on Tyler. Risky pass. Mm. Toby, a bit of a hospital pass that for Toby Harrison, but he, he, he took the hit.
So again, the referee was clearly shouting there, hold 10, hold, and he still went through anyway. It's just giving away very easy possession for Coldy. Again, lack of discipline. Um, you know, we, we are killing ourselves again in terms of the softness of the penalties that we're giving away. Oh, that's a bit of a... <laughs> oh, there's a big let off there. But I don't know if that got caught in the wind, but he's, he's walloped it completely dead. And so we're back uh, where we were. Well, it's, it's nice to know they can make the occasional mistake. Yeah. And they're supposed to be top of the league. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> steady, just <Jeff>, steady. <laughs> yes, I'll get complaints again. <laughs> So just a coldy player getting a little bit of attention here so the boys are getting some water on. Yeah, Derek, Derek Salisbury has been a you know, fantastic stalwart for Coldy. Um, you know, really, really interesting character. Him, 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 and, him, and, his, him and his father, in good company. Always uh, you know, good for a chat. <laughs> I remember him playing here for Oral when they were disintegrating, when they were on the down. Yeah. And he was playing 100% all day long. Oh yeah, he's, he's always been one of those. Yeah. Perfect angle here for the scrum to see what's going on. Let's go, come on! Yes! 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 Not take. See, he's on his own a little bit here. He's going to have to be careful. I don't think Sam Wallbank agreed with him hanging on to the ball. So they'll be encouraged by that scrum hoppers anyway. Yeah, that was um, an interesting style of play, uh, part of play, shall we say. It was um, a good scrum. And we decided to go quick. I think uh, it was a Bit of fire at least, bit of, bit of yeah. passion I think, that was good. Um, but again, let, let's build some pressure now, you know, we, we do need the next score. So. Would you have done what Joe Pryor did then, actually take a quick tap, I mean, we ended up getting what we needed to get out of it. Or would you like us to build a little bit more, have a bit more patience? Um, so if Joe thinks that he's, he's seen something then fair enough, and then it's empowered him to have a look. But, um, you know, given the fact that we've given away a couple of penalties at the breakdown for not perhaps um, being there in good numbers, I've probably just done thirty percentages of it. And again, oh, and he's, just gifted, he's gifted the pass straight to Toby Harrison there. So a bit of a let off again for Hoppers. Matt Lamprey busting through. Now Matt Lamps does complain a lot about people holding on around his neck, but. He is, a, he is a tank of a fella to get down. Just got to be accurate here. Let's you know, make sure. Oh, I think uh, that was a, a, that, that was unfortunate. I'd, I'd be interested to see what interference was going on there. Uh, uh, the, the ref called it that he hit it into his own leg, but we'll see <laughs> what happened there. Mm. Not sure. We might have to look at the replay on that one. Knock on by Hoppers first, unfortunately.
few stray arms, I think, at the, uh, the rock area, getting onto the scrum off. Um, we can get away with it. Well, the French seem to get away with it uh, against Wales, so uh, maybe this is the new uh, the new tactic for defensive play. Well, I think we've also got to play the clear out a little bit further than we are doing at the moment, so I'm not getting drawn into that one, John. You know, uh, <laughs> you, you did, you, you're resisting very well, I'm gonna, there's not a single prod I've done that you've reacted to. <laughs> Talk about deliberate knock-ons, that might be a different one. <laughs> See if we can keep the scrum pressure from last time. Set. That was an early engagement. It must be an early engagement by Colby. No, he's he's letting it go. This is the real first sustained bit of pressure hoppers have had in the 22 now. Uh, it'd be good if we could get, come away with at least something from this passage of play. So for those who don't, we've only got 10 minutes left of the first half. Coldy are 20 nil up after some um, breakaway tries to really get their score up into the 20s. Set! It's so about set. Let's see if... Uh, the ball's out. Let him go, don't let him go! Come on! That was Jake Scott holding on to whatever he could there to bring the player down, but he got the job done. Hoppers have done well to retain that. It's better now. Width, width, no, no, no. There's no one child, it's an easy that take for the again. We had the ball, we had the numbers. We just kicked the ball away there. No one was expecting the chase. One, Jacob! We got away with it there. Mm. Um, yeah, that's, that's really that's really disappointing, and I think that's probably an area that we've talked on about. You know, that's game management there. You know, you, you've, you've got yourself into a position where you've managed to narrow the defensive line. There is a bit of width wider out, and um, you know, they kick the ball poorly. You know, to a waiting back three. You know, we are very very dangerous. You know, we've got to be a little bit quieter than that. Um, otherwise, you know, we are going to find ourselves. You know, we have had a comment from a, a certain former captain watching this at the moment asking, uh, tell Dyer to stop mumbling. <laughs> it, he, wasn't, he was never that confident when he was here. <laughs> right, okay. Do you want me to guess which one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's, our, it's our fellow uh, former commentator PJ, probably up with his, yeah, his slippers on. Land. Yeah. Bye. Uh, good afternoon, Pidge. <laughs> so nearly. Go on, Again, I'm just an un un yeah. uh, advantage over from the knock on from Hoppers that led to the end of that attack, but we'll see what Cole to do with that. I assume they're going to go for territory here. Yeah, Slow the ball down. Caterpillar, or whatever they want to call it these days, is in place. Yeah. I assume that's going to be banned soon. 
Ali Murray here collecting. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. High, high tackle. Oh, best, oh. best spotted it. So we've got an opportunity. As Dara says here, we've got a free, free ball to do something here. That's good defence by Calder, though. It looks like the player's hurt himself. Oh, no, he's back up. So again, you know, we overcomplicated matters there. You know, we, we, we've got in behind, we'd you know, got ourselves into a position where we probably had the overlap. You know, all players needed to do then was just hold their position, you know, hands, you know, try and work Jacob into space on the outside. Uh, you know, Ryan came back in and um, you know, the opportunity was lost. So um, again, a little bit of confused thinking. You know, it's been better the last five, ten minutes. We've started to play with a bit of you know, intent, we carried better. Um, you know, just got to really try and finish off one of these opportunities. You know, we've been in there, in there half for the last ten minutes, I would think. Yeah, that's right. Player injured in the middle of the field at the moment. Looks like he's all right. I think it's a little bit, of, you know, when, when you've done that hard work, you plus the defensive line, which in itself is probably the hardest thing. Once, once you're actually in behind and you're running at a, a disorganised defence, sometimes just keeping it nice and simple, like, you know, just using the numbers, letting the ball you know, go through the hands, and quite often, you know, sort of get you to where you then want to be in terms of either scoring or, or very much further down the field. So, it's a bit frustrating that we're doing that and then making silly mistakes um, you know, when we've done the hard work to make the, the line burst. Good tackle by Lamprey coming across the Toby Harrison getting himself over the ball and jackling it. That man that came from really good line speed there, you know, Ogre, you know, got out there, he made the tackle, he got the guy on the deck and gave Toby an opportunity as a good open side to you know, get on top of the ball, which um, I mean, that brings us into uh, a line out you know, just outside the five metre. I think we could win this one, John. We seem to have squandered quite a few positions like this. <laughs> <laughs> the former captain was good at that. <laughs> Squandering good positions. <laughs> the poor guy's got a heart issue, Gareth, has he? <laughs> yeah. didn't, have, didn't have an arms issue there, did he? <laughs> <laughs> Another attacking line out here for Hoppers. We should just point out, like we do every game, a big thanks to all the players' sponsors and the club sponsors that come on board and give money to the, the club for this because community clubs like Hoppers rely on these sponsors and we're, we're very, very grateful for everyone that contributes and helps us keep our club going. Yeah, yeah. It's a great long line out there. Oh, I need to stay bigger there, let them get that to deck. We shouldn't allow that. Slow ball here from Hoppers yeah. to try to Use it! It's <laughs> like behind him. Tackle oh. I mean, Ali Murray has great hands. Not only for a, for a forward, he's got really good hands, but again, it's just little knock ons that are happening in our game. It just kills all sort of momentum. Yeah, it's another, it's another unforced error, unfortunately. You know, um, probably had a look at the defensive line coming towards him. Um, 
unfortunately, you know, we, we've allowed the attack to, to become static and slow down. Um, you know, we've called a, a line out drive, we've allowed them to get back to floor probably too easily. And from there, you know, the pace has really gone out of the attack. Long kick there for Tyler Spencer. Mm, good kick. That's a great kick. Fantastic kick. Yeah. Game management. Half time. Half time there as well. 39 minutes on the clock, you see. He's not messing around this ref. He, he, he'd had enough. Let's reflect on that half first, okay? So, um, obviously, st Coldy started very well. We have to give him that. Um, but did Hoppers gift them more of a lead than actually they earned it? Um, I think it's frustrating when you get a couple of tries against you where missed tackles, you know, it, it was a real, you know, the second one where the fullback runs through is really, really weak. You know, we've, we've kicked the ball poorly, we've not competed for it. And then, you know, to add insult to injury, we don't make a tackle when, you know, he's run through the middle of pretty much the pack of forward. So, you've got to say, scores like that are really, really soft to concede. Um, you know, Coldy probably haven't had to work too hard for those 20 points. Um, and again, we've had probably on balance over the course of the 40 minutes as much of the game and much of the position and you know you can see the difference you know they've got 20 points on the board and, and we haven't. Yep. Now if all the people from Coldy and I know some of you are, uh, are listening and thank you very much we are going to have a little bit of a Q&A session with Gareth as his, as head of uh, rugby operations here at Hoppers about some of the future that's going on at Hoppers so if you don't want to listen to this do come back we'll be uh, we'll be uh, back uh, for the second half but so Gareth I mean I mean, there's lots of questions we have. The club's going through a period of transition, both within the clubhouse and in obviously the team and the squad and the operations as well. So, what's the most important aspect for you going forward that the club's got the direction the club's going in? Um, yeah, I suppose all I can really do is, is look after it from the rugby perspective. You know, all I can work to is the budget that is set by the club, and, and you know, financially we've we've had a you know a, a good budget. You know, and I think over the last two years we've had. You know, two pretty positive seasons. Um, you know, I think it's, it gets more and more difficult for clubs to to be able to maintain the level of expenditure. So I think we've got to make sure that we are spending it in the right ways. And, and I think the first thing that we're going to have to make sure is that the, the coaching setup is right. You know, we have to make sure that the people who are, you know, doing the the preparation of the team are. You know, capable of, of preparing us in the right way because ultimately, you know, you can have you know a squad of how many players you want who are all capable of playing the standard. If there's no organised structure, and, I, and you know, I think probably the, the issues that we've had this year is we've not really had a you know, a really dedicated specialist working behind the scrum. Yeah. Um, so that that's been an area that we, we can hold our hands up and say we haven't got right. I think the defence in terms of. Um, you know, our tackle technique, something that we've been good on in recent years, seems to have you know, gone down this year. So again, you know, Byron, who I've mentioned, who's coming on board, will be looking at, at, at that as well. So that, that, that's two two areas that we probably feel that we should have been better that will will be have been addressed. Um, so talk us through the Byron McGregor thing, because obviously well-known player in the Scotland camp for this weekend, Six Nations. So how did that come about? Tell us about how, who approached who and how, how did it come about? Yeah, we, we were just aware that some of the Sail Sharks first team squad have been doing coaching with clubs and um, you know, Byron's been working down at Bowden um, who are I think probably about three or four levels or two or three levels below you know where we are um, you know Byron's got a you know an ambition to be a, you know involved in coaching after his playing day so he's obviously thinking ahead to that period of time and we just you know through the grapevine really more than anything you know heard that he was looking to perhaps coach at a slightly higher level than he has been already um, so we had a, a conversation with him um, he's met with uh, Paul Arnold he's met with you know, Mike Bailey and you know we both you know saw that it was a you know, a, a step forward and you know Byron has been down at the club he's had a look at the, the, the facilities which obviously are always a great selling point for us um, and also had a look at you know the players in training and felt that he could really add value and on that basis you know we were really keen to get the deal done and, and thankfully that's something that the club's managed to do and does it and do um, obviously it's on it's like a signature signing obviously it's not a player signature signing but a coaching signature signing. does that help give the impression that okay we might go down this this year but actually we're we're not going to 
going to settle for going down. We are ambitious. We want to move forward. We want to get back up to where we think we should be. Yeah, I think so. I, I think um, you know it's worked well for us in the past. In, in the time that I've been involved at Hopper since I came back from from Blackburn, you know we had that sort of professional, should we say, input all the time. You know we had Carl Fitzpatrick, who was you know really really good for Hoppers for a number of years. Um, you know we had obviously Sean Long, who, who was doing a bit of coaching and playing, obviously. And you know in recent times, you know we had Yestin Harris now. Yastin was you know, involved as a consultant. He was doing sessions probably once a week um, you know, during our Northern Premiership uh, winning campaign. And also last year he was he was involved. But unfortunately, you know, due to work commitments, Yastin's had to step away. And, and probably we have missed his input, you know, over the course of this year. So to get somebody of, of Byron's, you know, uh, standing, the fact that he's involved in the, the pro game, he's also very very keen to to do the job. You know, I think it ticks a lot of boxes. And from going from coach to playing what has been obviously we know some players have already gone yeah you know people like Alex Hurst and Tom Davidson have already have already left yeah what has been the response to players to the the seeming almost inevitability that we are going to go down yeah I think it's it's a case of that you know we know that there's a salary cap um, that we've got to you know, we've got to adhere to in the Northern Premier, which is significantly below what we're spending this year. So we've got to make some some realistic decisions about who we can keep and who we can't. And, and I think what we're also mindful of is there's been a number of players, older players this year, who, you know, won't be involved next year for whatever reasons. Mm. You know, obviously, you know, we've mentioned about Paul Paul Millet, who's who's had to retire. Um, obviously, James Fitzpatrick, who has been great for us for the last two years, James. Yeah. But you know, his his job has taken him, you know, out of the area, yeah. and it's just made it impossible for him to certainly train and then also play. And, and you know, obviously, these the senior players will be like Alex, like Tom, some that have obviously, you know, we've had to make you know, pretty tough decisions. I, I think with both Tom and Alex, it was a case of for them. You know, they were travelling long distances. Yeah. Um, you know, Tom came to us because he was working in the area. That has also changed. So, so there's a lot of things that go on probably in the background that you know a lot of people don't know about, which is down to the personal circumstances of people. Yeah. So, the fact that that's probably freed up five or six members of the staff straight away, you know, means that we don't then have to be as knee jerk mm -hmm. towards other players. So, I think what we said to the lads is, look, you've got to show us how much you want to be involved next season. I'm not going to keep anybody who doesn't want to be here. Yeah. Um, also, all we can do is say, look, this is what the shape of things is going to look like for next year. Obviously, the coaching staff has been reinforced. We've spoken with Carl Ince, who you know a lot of people in the club will know about being strength and conditioning. We've done a few sessions with Carl already, and the players have really, really yeah. enjoyed that. So we're really hopeful that we can get that one sorted out because I think you know we re realise that you know, in Carl's words, the lads are, are fit. You know, they're, they're certainly not. They're certainly not unfit, you know, to a reasonable level in their fitness, but he really is excited that the lads, he can get a lot more out of them in that respect, so I think, you know, there's a lot of decisions that need to be made, we've already had chats with a lot of the players, a lot of the players are very, very keen to stay, which is great, um, I think a lot of them feel that they own the club, mm -hmm. you know, something after their performances this season and the results this season particularly, um, and we'll continue that process, I think what also the club has sort of said to us is, look, we, we really want to see a more homegrown sort of emphasis mm -hmm. coming through. Um, yeah, can I, can I just chip in there? I mean, one of the things I was going to say to you was um, the second team has had a not a very good season this season. Is that just a, a spin-off of the injuries in the first team that they've been weakened? And are we are we right in that organisation? Are we are we getting the, the youngsters coming through? Yeah, I think, I think it's a fair point, John, but, you know... <laughs> I don't want to make it sound as if the injuries is an excuse because realistically, you know, every club has to deal with them. Every club has to, you know, um, have a squad capable of covering for injuries. I think from our point of view, it's just been the, the, the numbers at times that we've had to deal with and the firefighting. It's felt at times that, you know, in the autumn, particularly October, November, we had... 60% you know, of the squad unavailable for a couple of games and you know understandably there's going to be a knock-on effect when you're pulling guys up from the second team. Or getting um, Arnie out of retirement again. Well you know <laughs> guys going down in the warm-up as well you know where Arnie's had to you know name himself on the bench at the last minute but you know I think if you look at December when we got a lot of guys back from injury or certainly you know we were certainly not as as ravaged you know the second team went unbeaten you know and they beat you know Fyle, Sedgley, Lim who we were second, third and fourth in that division at the time and then you know, when injuries have kicked in again in the new year, um, you know, results have been mixed again. So, 
it, it has been a big issue this season. You know, there's no getting away from that. I think the other thing is that second team would be, you know, there are clubs in the levels below who are prepared to pay money. And if you find that the door perhaps is blocked oh, yeah. to getting in the yeah. first team, you know, and you are being offered a reasonable sum of money, should we say, to go and play elsewhere on a Saturday, if that's what and the guaranteed main aim is, first team players. That is, you know, if that's what your perhaps key focus is, then you're going to take that. Um, that chance. Um, so players just coming out now. Um, obviously, thank you very much, Gareth, for, for a bit of curious. Anything else you want to mention before we get all on into the second half, really, about something to do with the club and the structure? Yeah, I'm just saying, I think, you know, you know, we've got a great set of sponsors, we've got a great set of supporters. Obviously, I'd just encourage you all, you know, really to back us again. You know, we, we know it's been a difficult season. Um, you know, I'm confident that we'll have a a good strong squad for next year and confident in the coaching structure that we have. I do, we will address some of the other things around the development and there will be a, a few more young faces that will get their opportunity before the end of the season. So um, you know, get behind those lads because they are the future. Brilliant, thank you very much. And so we're off again in the second half. Cold ER, 20 0 up. Good, another good kick from Joe Pyre on the money there, was just not able to gather at the far end. I think what you're seeing there is, is a little bit of a, you know, what we've just touched on at half time. You know, Connor, who's been out a lot this season, um, you know, if you're confident and you know, you've, you've been playing regularly, you probably take that. And you know, Connor's scored a lot of tries for the club in his career. You know, I think at the moment he's just feeling his way back. Um, probably one eye on the, the collision that's coming because he's had quite a few injuries. Yeah. And, um, you know, makes a, a, you know, an unforced error. So. I think in an embodiment of you know what the knock-on effect is, though you've probably seen it in in Connor's case. Brilliant tackle by Sam. So important hoppers, I feel, don't let Colby get a score early on, otherwise it could get quite ugly and a bit of a long second half for us. Yeah, it is. Yeah. He's on his own now, we need to get to him quick. That's great clear out that from Chris Taylor. We need to be a lot more aggressive in the chase than that. Because it wasn't actually a bad kick, that was pretty much a good kick. Just before the 22, so it was... It as good was as his chase. Yeah, yeah that's and correct. The chase was very, very disappointing there for me. Is that because, you think, because Coldy have had two breakaway kind of tries, the defenders are not going full bore into an attack because they're worried about the counter-attack hitting his back? Um, You'd have to ask the individual players and not one John to me. I, I just think if they kicked up uh, and you know, you know, you, you've got your two wingers there, your quick boys, yeah. you can really apply pressure. And um, you know, if the kick's a bit long, then fair enough, you need to sit back and you know, make sure that you are organised to stop the next wave. But to me, that was a good enough kick to apply some real pressure. It's a pretty good kick there, took final by Joe Pryor. We'll keep you abreast of uh, any substitutes that come on. I think Olga is. Yeah, Noah, Mil on. Noah Miller's coming on there for, for Olga. Looks like he's struggling a little bit. Holding his back slightly. That's a good counter weapon by Cole. Did that enough gear? They've secured it. To slow this ball down here. Ball in jump. Come on, let the tackle stick. Sam Stott seems to be throwing himself around quite a bit from Hoppers. Oh, the referee was going to do that then and then brought his arm back in. Was that Noah Miller trying to get hold of it? I think they Yeah, it was. Oh, 
from by the man in the scrum cap in the tackle. Accidental offside, the referee. Accidental offside, not man in the tackle. Mm, uh, Scotland rushing the uh, World Cup quarter final, that decision would have been like that. Then. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're just, so, coming on to the pitch, we have had our first substitution, so Noah Miller has come on for old run from the This is the first scrum for him. Yeah, John Blanchard will switch from the tight end side to the loose side. Crouch. I'd say we've been holding our own in the scrum, but it looks like Cody have had just a little bit of extra in them in the, in the scrum. Yeah. So always, obviously, as you would expect, you know, can scrum is pretty low. We always seem to. A lot of movement. Ref's not giving it, he seems to be happy. We've got the arm muscle there, but we've, we've not managed to turn it over. It's unfortunate that there, you know, Ryan made a good tackle, but you know, with Matt trying to get on the ball, he's, he's probably locked his own player in yeah, over it uh, there. Yeah. And the refs just said that on the comms as well, saying Lamps was perfectly legal, but Ryan not being able to get out of the way has just given Coldy probably another easy three points here, but we will see. <laughs> Again, it's, it sort of stems really, I suppose, from you know, Caldy got flat to the line, you know, put players in motion, and, and we're just not numbering up properly. You know, they're getting their, their, their way through the, the line and then offloading, so you know, it's, it is a big area for us, I think, you know, to improve for next season. If you're watching on the live stream, give us a shout out where you're watching from. We always like to know. It's usually the furthest afield is Ryan's family. That uh, they usually get the the winners for the most long distance office TV viewer. <laughs> Elsewhere in this league today, I am leading the Tonians by 14 points to three. Well, that's no good for Fylde. They're determined to lose matches so they don't go up at the right, moment. We've got a couple of young guys coming on here. Uh, Tom Walker for his debut. Will Clapham for his second appearance. So. Uh, I'm really keen to see how these boys go. Congratulations to him as well. And straight into it, first uh, action, kick off, straight off the off. That's it, Turf. Now, again, come on. He's had time to mm -hmm. let it run. He's had it time yeah. to regather it. And we're only making a tackle when he's got back to the 22. Oh. I don't think he'll get away with that one. Uh, he's apologised straight away, but unfortunately, Sam is seen 10 minutes in the bin. Again, that's what happens if you don't do the first part of a you know, phase correctly. If you've not chased properly, you've not got the, 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 the breakdown established, you know, and you're not in defensive position, you know, it's really more likely to see these loose arms, shall we say. Yeah. Um, and then it compounds the errors, doesn't it? And, that, and that's the way we get ourselves in more trouble. Move around the front here. Uh, he's got some wheels, this uh, <laughs> the hooker from Coldy. To get some with So Hopper's a man down at the moment. Inevitability that try, unfortunately. It's a bit, it's again, it's a bit soft, and you know, and uh, this is what happens, you know, we've kicked off, we've 
not done the job at kick-off. We've then been penalised and um, you know, good teams will, will make that count against you. And, uh, I think that probably again sort of one of our big issues. You know, it's, like we said, we've had good parts of games, but the tackling has been pretty weak there for a good number of minutes, unfortunately. I think it seemed they seemed to get beyond the game line, Coldy, on, on virtually every bust there. Yeah. So, and, it, and you know, as, if they gain, if they get the game line success, your defence isn't as organised, and everything just becomes that much harder. Now the sunshine's gone and the grey clouds are gathering above hoppers. Um, unfortunately this is now starting to look a little bit ugly at 28-0. Uh, um, you know, the young players and opposite, you've got to remember the pride in that badge. You've got to think, alright, start from now, get going and get some points on the pitch. That's, there's a lot of people here coming to watch, there's a lot of people, you know, supporting this club. You've got to earn your place. Get him, get him, eat him! Third tackle, next tackle. Yeah. So we should see if we can sneak some champagne into the uh, coldy water bottles because, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, they must be almost there in terms of uh, and I, sealing the title now. And I think when you when you saw the amount of players they brought, obviously not all of them are in the match day squad, I think lots of them wanted to be here under thinking, well, they might do it today. And, you know, they played them. You can see why the top of the league. They played very well. I mean, it's team Coldy, you know, they're well coached. Some really, really good players, good culture. You know, congratulations to them. Good shot by Oh Good lunch by uh, by Hoppers there. Come on, Colby boy! Come on, Colby! I've just seen Rob Meadows is on the pitch. I didn't see the who came. Yeah, it's Toby Harris was Toby, good. yeah. So. <laughs> Is that his regular position, Meadows? Or have I seen him in the backs in the past? Yeah, for the first game he, he was uh, he was playing in the backs, but um, he wants to be considered in the back. Um, so he's, he's been working hard at the uh, intricacies of it. So again, an opportunity to see what he's, he's going to bring. It's where the glory is in the pack, we all know that. <laughs> Oh, stay this side. Oh, that's unlucky. See, that's the threat somebody that like, Jacob Brown can bring. Yeah. He's, um, you know, he's got a you know, really good turn of pace. You know, I think there's certain things we'd like Jacob to work on, but you know, that's in his natural for the best. You know, I think that's something we've got to encourage with him. I should just correct myself, I thought that had actually gone over the try line, but it hasn't actually, so that was actually a very good kick. Mm. Is, is Jacob one that's likely to be staying in the area? I mean, so he's finished his university, is he yeah, settled he in a job? Yeah, he's, he's obviously, you know, that next stage in his life, you know, he's completed his uni education now, so he's, uh, he's working. Um, He's a wrestling lad, he's obviously come through the system, so we're very much... Same school as you, if I remember well, rightly? Well, uh, yeah, same sixth form. I went, I went to Hutton sixth form, yeah. Uh, I don't know if Mr Brown probably went there. He is one to five, <laughs> he's probably... <laughs> probably a bit cleverer than me, I would think. <laughs> Couldn't be Gary, surely you've got yourself in the same team as Steve Boythwick. Well, <laughs> My line out front, I like to think probably yeah. mate Stephen. Helped him on his way, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was like a rat to kick him everything he needed for. <laughs> Just a little bit of time off while the Coldy player gets a little bit of 
treatment right, on his back and his feet. I think the ref has actually been fairly good today, actually, for a young guy I haven't seen before. He seems to have been fairly bad, but there hasn't been masses of contentious issues. Really. No, it's been a, a pretty uh, clean game in that respect. He's, uh, he's not been noticed, I suppose, which is the best compliment you can have. Yeah. yeah. So, Calder here made a few yards, now ready to do the, the box kick away. Not made it though, right into the middle of the field, chance for time with Spence to break. But... And again. Oh, you almost cleared out the wrong player there by the looks of it. Yeah, well, you know, the, the Coldy 7, as we mentioned before, you know, he's, a, he's a very strong guy, and if you, if you don't affect the clear out first time you're asking, he's going to lock on and he's going to you know, affect turnovers and um, you know, he's been very very much influential at the breakdown. Um, so there's been a lot of talk with England selection all the rest of it about the back row specialist number eight do you want two sevens three sevens in the back row what's your impression how do you see the game going for the back row? Um, yeah I think it's going to be I, I'll be honest I think the game will be, will be one in the front five I think um, England's front five is immensely powerful and once you've got perhaps a bit of a go forward you, you can um, you know it's a different game for your back row then if you're if you're on the front foot it's like half backs you know you can be a lot more dynamic in terms of how you affect the game um, I think if, if there's parity up front then it will be a really interesting battle I think you know there's two out and out sort of fetches in the England back row with Curry and, and Wilson um, you can almost make a case for there being three in the Welsh back row. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Navidi's come straight back into the Welsh. Uh, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dropped to the bench. That's right. And I think that's you know if, if, if Navidi's fit, that's that's a, the right call. You know, he's um, very much underrated player. I think. I think Welsh fans appreciate what he does. He's an immensely strong guy, um, and he's also extremely powerful at the breakdown. So, yeah, it'd be, it'd be interesting to see. How, but I, I say I think England have the edge in the front five. I think that's where the game ultimately be decided. Um, I, mean, I was actually been just about today's game, which is obviously uh, we were concentrating on there, but also just the way it's going now. I mean, the kind of the same, like you know, like Ben Earl sort of thing, but the pace and that sort of dynamic running that they can do from seven is a completely new kind of game, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, you know, Tom Curry's an excellent footballer. Um, it's an interesting one to play at eight. I think obviously it's, it's been brought about because of Billy Van der Polen's injury, so perhaps that's. You know, more of the reason why he's he's being used there. Um, yeah, I, I must admit it, it'll be interesting to see. Now then. Oh, yeah. Here we go again. Yeah. Shut down the space now. And, uh, we've got the man is making that tackle. Well done. I will say I think Sam Scott has been has had a pretty decent game today. Sam's been outstanding, yeah. Yeah. Play of the Simbin period, but uh, Baldy making it, making it work. Well, you know, we should have scored at the other end. Um, you know, you'd say that it'd be nicer if the ball had just sat up, but I uh, yeah, should really, should really have scored. And then from then the game was just, well, it was almost like a sevens, wasn't it? And um, you know, Coldy again showing their class by not missing the opportunity when it came. So do we think, and I'm going back to my early conversation before that play, 
the big number eights, the Billy Vunapolas and the you know the Nathan Hughes, these huge towering men, the Louis Pickamores. Mm. Are they gonna do you think phase out for a more faster dynamic kind of number eight? Well right. <coughs> look how Sam Simmons is isn't being selected now. Yeah, he's probably the best number eight in the premiership. Yeah, it's interesting, but I, I think, you know, the game goes in cycles and I think there's you know, probably a move towards perhaps faster, quicker um, back rows. I think there's probably, um, it, it, let's be frank, if Billy really going to follow the last fit, he'd still be playing. Um, but, yeah, it's an interesting one. As I say, game, the game does evolve, it does go in different ways in, in usually between World Cups, so... Yeah, probably, I would say when Billy on the Polish fit, let, let's see if Tom Curry is still the incumbent number eight or whether he reverts back to the front, that'll tell us. I think you haven't done any calls to any Saracens players, uh, you know, but they haven't been on your call list. Yeah, a little, little bit out of our price range, to be honest. Uh, they've, got pro they've got property everywhere. I thought everywhere, you sent really a scouting team down here in the season. Well, we did go down there with the scout, yeah. Come on, 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 come on,
No. Your first time and then you hold him off. Oh, and until the quick tap, Ali's on his way. Yes, Ali! Let's go on this way. And the home crowd would like Hodge to score here, just to prevent the event. But that's good power up and home. By Cole, they have determined it here. They might have. No. Watch Lance, come out, Lance. Yeah. 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 Referee. He's referee said it's held up. It's held up. I'm sure Lampard yeah. will let us know if it was or not in his, his usual way. Let's hear what the ref says. Carlson is coming off. Yeah, he seems to be a bit of trouble there, but... It looks like it's hurt his ribs, ribs Carlson, yeah. yeah. So Toby Harrison is back on. Well done, Ryan! Well done, Ryan! Yeah, I think Tom Walker can be uh, pretty proud of the way he's come on and, yeah. and, and you know, affected the game. He's, he goes up straight away, right at home. Um, you know, showed some nice touches. Again, we've, we've cut the line now a couple of times and, and looked like we were in. And it's just again probably needing another pass just to finish the move off. <laughs> so 22 minutes gone in this second half. It's uh, Hopper still waiting to get onto the scoreboard. Yeah, I think we're probably probably bombed. Three, four good chances, I think. Yeah. Yep. Well, from that first sort of 20 minutes when we never got in there, 22. We've had a question, where's Tom Walker come from? And, uh, is, he, is he one of our academy <laughs> players? Tom is, is come from <laughs> Mr and Mrs Walker. OK, uh, there we go. The Preston area. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, obviously those those who've been watching Hoppers a few years will remember yeah, Tom's dad, Mickey. Um, you know, he was a first team player for many years. Tom's come through the mini youth. He's been at Myersco as well, at Myersco College. Um, so you know he's got a good rugby pedigree, and um, yeah, he's showing up well at the moment. Good platform. It's a good opportunity here. is sponsored by Haley Business Advisors, so thank you for them for sponsoring Matt this season. Uh, he appreciates it, and so do we as the club. Um, no, good number, good eight player that. Controlled the ball, went for the right opportunity, took it, got a try. Yeah, there's a former front runner and I'll say that it was all down to the hard work of those boys. Uh, yeah. 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 Do you know if Lamps has got a boot contract? Uh, is it? Uh, no, I no. just, just, just <laughs> poor taste. I think it's <laughs> and Chris Taylor's come off as well, so a good shift by, by Chris today. Yeah, Chris has had a you know, really good game again. You know. We're very keen that Chris is going to be part of things next year, and Sam Stott have been main co-captains, obviously for. You know, the, yeah, the interesting. Final that, how does that work, the co-captain business? I mean, for example, who does the referee talk to? Who talks to the referee? Yeah, we, we basically. Ali. <laughs> 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 no, we, we certainly don't know Ali to do that. Um, oh, 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 Jake just, just pushes the conversion. Yeah, the way, the way it generally works is that the guys, the two guys, take it in turns to be sort of lead captain, if you will, in terms of speaking to the referee. Um, I think we felt that what we'd like to try and get out of these last few games is a bit more leadership, a little bit more experience in the leadership. So, you know, both Sam and Chris have, have captained at age group level, you know, in terms of England counties. Um, you know, the, the two guys with the you know, attitude we're looking to take forward. And I think you know what you do get then is a balance. You know, Chris will be at times where his head's down, shoving in the scrum like that, um, and perhaps Sam is then more able to see what's happening in the wider sort of Bigger game. Picture, yeah. yeah, and um, you know they can work together like that. You know, they've both done extremely well with it so far. Ooh. And on the pitch for Chris Taylor is Oli Trips. Uh, Oli Trippier. He's uh, he's come on to finish out the game. 
Yeah, it's important that everybody gets you know a taste of the action. You know, everybody gets the opportunity to impress. You know, that's another part of you know what we're looking at in these games. Is these guys you know holding hands up and saying you know, what they're going to bring for the remainder of the season and next year. Looked like he came in at the side a bit there for me. Yeah. But, um, No. What about Leeds with the university? Do we get many players from that route these days? Not as, not as many as we used to. I, I think you know, UCLan decided that their rugby was going to remain more of a social part of their you know sports thing. Whereas obviously a lot of other unis are these days really trying to make it a recruit, yeah, mm -hmm. professional, um, you know, sporting sort of uh, experience. So. Um, yeah, we've got one or two, but certainly that's not the numbers that we once saw, you know, likes of Tom Hughes and people like that. And do we have contacts? I remember from, uh, from playing for some of the lower teams for Hoppers, we used to get lads coming from the army, from the barracks. Now, are they not eligible or...? We've still got our contacts there. I think the problem we have there sometimes is their availability, isn't it? Um, you know, it's, it's great if guys can turn up and... And play a game and get a game, but you know, at first team level, realistically, you've, you know, you've got to be capable of training and putting in the hard work to to be there. For that. And uh, so if these guys are away for long periods, then that's not going to be the case. Although it was fun when we used to get huge Fijians <laughs> from the army playing for the Hopper Six. Yeah, it, was always, it was always, it always helped. Yeah. Disappointing again, you know, Miller's putting a really good tackle there. You know, he's driven them on back and we've we've sort of gone off our feet at the tackle. Just starting to get a little bit darker and a bit murkier here at Lightfoot Green. Still wind is a little bit but it's still good conditions for a good game. We're approaching the final 12 minutes of the half. I think it's going to be a fairly lively bus back to uh, the Wirral this evening. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You won't be on it, will you? <laughs> no, 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 certainly not. Kidnapped. <laughs> I don't think Colden needs much excuse usually for a, you know, a live <laughs> bus, but um, quick line yeah, out there big, to the front. Big celebration from the season uh, tonight. I mean, do you look at clubs like Colden and think, okay, what can we do to get up to that standard? Yeah, I think you know it's 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 interesting that they've kicked on in recent years, isn't it? You know, we were very very well matched as clubs in terms of results for a long period. You know, they've had sort of three or four really good years now. Um, it could be there's a really good crop of players come through, or you know they've got their recruitment spot on. I think possibly what I would learn is the fact that they've maintained a really strong group of coaches who, you know, a bit of experienced guys who've been there, done it. Um, not just at first team level, but also you know they've got people like Louis McGowan and. And Andrew uh, Sutty, you know, Suto in, in the seconds who are doing you know, great work and, and if you can get guys like that who are prepared to put in the time, um, you know, they, they're going to give a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge to young guys coming through. So it's a, a conveyor belt of, of probably players that are coming through and to be fair to Calder, they're, they're sticking very closely to their, you know, their, their sort of own boys, they don't go for due registrations or anything like that from sale. Um, and they're back to you know, the boys that they have and I think it's a really pragmatic and sensible way to go about things. Use it. Let me take you back three years or so. If you were making the decision three, four years ago about the artificial pitch, mm. yes or no? Um, I think from um, the club perspective, I think it was a no-brainer. Really, I think it's uh, you know the fact that we, we you know, I think we we also have to remember that if you're talking at it from my perspective of being you know, probably you know first and second team orientation, I think you know from a club perspective it's the right thing. You know, we've got the opportunity for all of our you know, teams from the, you know the under sevens through to the, the, the senior teams through to the ladies teams to play. You know, you don't want to be losing training sessions or games because of the weather you know we'd have certainly lost some in the last few weeks you know if we hadn't had the uh, you know the AGP um, I think probably what we've 
got to uh, get to grips with a little bit more and there's something that I've asked our physio team to look at is whether there is any sort of evidence mm. now of you know, particular injuries that we can better prevent you know if we're seeing any trends now in terms of guys picking up you know soft yeah, tissues or long like injuries yeah. you know, I don't share some of this you know view at the moment that they are you know, dangerous and there's, there's, there's higher percentage of burns you know I, I speak to our guys a lot I've got a lot of feedback from our players you know this season and last about their experience of the AGP and, and generally it's always been pretty favourable you know it's, it's certainly not um, you know burns being experienced every week um, I seem to recall when you used to play later in the season on grass pitches when particularly there'd been a lack of rain you know you could easily yeah. come off a, a grass pitch with not much skin on your legs if you did make it a few tackles and were dragged along the deck. So um, from a club perspective John it, it, it's, a, it's a huge positive for us. And things like it enables the clubs to do other things as well and have extra capacity because I mean there's a lot of talk about the Rugby League World Cup, Preston being one of the host cities as mm. well and so that wouldn't be available to us if we probably didn't have this pitch. No that's right you know and um, you know, again you know, it allows you to play in a certain way I think we've probably got to make sure that we embrace that. A well worked try there by Cold. He got it, got it set and drove us over. Um, but this game's pretty well yeah, seen. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, it's just um, you know, Cold here playing sort of the, the charity of cake, really. You know, we've got what about seven or eight minutes left to go here. Um, yeah, and I think you can see what a what, why they are they're, they're a champion team. You know, they've, uh, they've been extremely clinical every time, or pretty much every time we've got down to our 22. Um, they're very, very clear in what they're trying to do, and uh, they've got the personnel to do it. So PJ's just asked, does he have enough? How long's left? He needs to nip to Tesco's before the before the Wales England game. There, there is seven minutes left on the on the clock, PJ, so you can wait. <laughs> We deliver such a service here on this TV. I wonder what he's going for. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a bottle of hand sanitizer yeah, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit him, come on hoppers, say again, just a bit too much time. He thinks it's a try. Come back. Uh, it. He has no confidence in Hopper's defence this ball boy, at all. <laughs>
referee just says it's a big mess to do again. Yeah. Since we've got the shovel now. Yeah, I thought, I thought we, were, we were slightly dominant. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Scott. Away. No and again. Yeah, he's been today, Sam. Steady picking and going from Calder here, making progress. Yeah. And an offside from Hoppers there gives him a free play as well. Yeah, yeah just trying to tie in defenders before they can see her. Yeah. Now they'll spin it out wide. Oh. <laughs> no. So no arm tackle, not offside actually. <laughs> <laughs> quick tap and yeah, call again. I know it's, it's probably irrelevant because you know we're in the last couple of minutes, but you know again we've got to be you know, sharper. I know we're probably tired, but it's uh, Again, a bit of a soft score to, to concede after you know it was a really good period of, um, of defence. You know, we, we, got, we, we really got stuck in, but um, yeah, academic really. Yeah, and that's cold and close, close on putting nearly 50 on us. It's there's, there's no real good spin on that, really, is there? No, there's not. There's not. Um, I'd imagine so, he's yeah, walking around. It's See if we can have one to finish off. Yeah. Just to get a little bit more respect to him. Final minute and a half there here at Lightfoot Green. The next home game is versus Luptonians. We'll be doing a live stream again. Um, I hope you enjoy these live streams. Thank you so much for Bailey Financial Services for sponsoring the live streams and the highlights this season. We really, really appreciate it. And um, no, it's just. It's just a, a disappointing day, but I think the, the young lads have had a good run out. Yeah, yeah, I think there's been some positives there. Yeah, we've played well again in patches, we've caused trouble. Um, you know, it's been good to see you know, three or four of them get you know, a run. You know, we can see a bit more now about what they're about. You know, they're obviously only going to benefit from, from playing at this level and, and seeing what's required to, to, to you know, do well at this, in these games. So, um, a bit of coldy experience there. Number four came right through the middle, hooked onto our player. Not enough of our guys blocking his his path and was able to stop them all and turn over. Yeah, frustrating that. Very frustrating. You know, when you go out the corner, you've got to be switched on. You've got to know what we're doing. Um, you've know, got to be a lot more aggressive in that part of our game for me. We need a hooker, I think. Yeah, there's no hooker. Yeah, just trip here. It must be in the vein and Taylor's already on. Looks 
So half, yeah, half hope was lost to that, no? Can you yeah, beat some? Come on, quickly. No, <laughs> those days are well and truly good. <laughs> I, bet, I, bet, yeah. I bet Chris Taylor's delighted to be coming on yeah. for the last 15 minutes. Yeah, the last, <laughs> last, last, last play of the game. Yeah, yeah. Somebody will have to, somebody will have to go here. Yeah, Rob, like Rob Meadows is going to be sacrificed for that. Yeah. Make sure you get a full compliment in the front row. Yeah, so I just want to say, you know, congratulations to Coldy. I think, you know, they were probably really unlucky to actually come down last year anyway. I think it was in the, the final three minutes of the season that they were actually relegated anyway. Uh, and, um, you know, it's obviously been something that's, you know, they've carried with them for the season to put right. So, you know, congratulations to all the guys there. Um, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, they, they go up and do really well in National 1 because it'd um, be great to see some more Northern representation up there. Indeed. That's it, time is up. So. Wait. I say many congratulations to Coldy. Thank you to all their, all their viewers who've been watching us today as well. We thought we deserved victory, but they, oh no, I thought they were going to put it out, but they're going to have one more go. They want to hit that 50. Yeah, they do. Knowing that is time. No tackle, play. No, and that's no. it. Congratulations, Coldy. Yeah, yeah. Well done, Coldy. Well done, Coldy. Yeah.